the bell icon to turn on notifications. We've made the files the instructor uses in this tutorial available for free. Just click the link below in the video details to get these. Hello everyone and welcome back to this course on Excel for Business Analysts. We've made it all the way down to section eight and in this very short section, I want to talk to you a little bit about forecasting. So forecasting is essentially being able to predict future values based on historical values and trends. And it's really useful to be able to create a forecast to give you some idea of how your numbers are going to look in the future. So if you can imagine if you are the head of a sales team and you have your monthly sales data, being able to predict six or 12 months into the future and get a rough idea of what your sales are going to look like can be extremely helpful. And Excel has a few utilities that are really going to help you when it comes to forecasting accurately. Now, I will say that when it comes to forecasting, it's not an exact science. Forecasting uses your historical data to predict what's going to happen in the future. It doesn't necessarily account for any anomalies or things that might happen. For example, if a global event, much like we're having now, impacts sales for your company, then Excel isn't going to be able to predict that accurately. So really, just think of it as an estimate. It gives you a rough idea. It's not an exact science. Now I'm going to start out in this module by showing you a really helpful little utility called Forecast Sheets or One Click Forecasting. And whilst it's not quite one click, it's pretty close and it really does take all of the stress out of creating forecasts. Now the Forecast Sheets option is one of the newer options in Excel. So if you have Excel 2016 or later, then you should have access to this. If you want to quickly check, if you jump across to the data ribbon, in the forecast group, it's this button here, forecast sheet. And you can see as I hover over, the screen tip is telling me it creates a new worksheet to predict data trends. So let me show you how this works. So on the screen here, I have a very basic data set. I have a set of dates, and then I have some sales figures. And you can see that these dates are evenly spaced. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm taking a reading on the first of every month of the sales figures. So essentially these sales figures are from the previous month. And this is pretty important when you're forecasting. It's always going to be better if you have your dates evenly spaced. If you're taking your reading every day or every week or every month, as long as those dates are evenly spaced, Excel is going to have an easier time helping you with forecasting. It's also worth mentioning that with this forecast sheets option, you don't necessarily have to have all of your data points. In fact, if you have a few data points missing, Excel can still work out a reasonably accurate forecast. In fact, you can have up to 30% of data points missing and have the forecast still be accurate. Now, looking at this data for these sales figures, I can see that there is an increase each month. The increase isn't particularly evenly spaced. There's no real pattern to it. So this data is a good candidate for using the forecast sheets option. And what I essentially want to do is work out what my forecast is going to be for the next few months. So maybe I want to forecast up until the end of the year. So all I need to do is select all of my data, including the column headings. I'm going to go up to my data tab and click Forecast Sheet. And immediately you can see what Excel does here. It shows me a line chart and I can see my current sales plotted. So this blue line is my historical data and then these orange lines coming off here, this is the forecast. Now currently my forecast is ending on November the 1st. So I'm actually going to change this forecast end date so that it ends on January the 1st. So now I can see how my data has been forecast. That's the middle orange line running through there. And then what we have is an upper and a lower confidence bound. So this is how confident Excel is that 95% of all sales figures are going to fall between this lower and upper confidence bound. Now, if you click the little options to expand that out, you do have a few more things you can modify in here. 
So for example, you can set the forecast start date and you can see there is that confidence interval. So as I said, the lower and upper confidence bounds, they are 95% confident that all results are going to fall within those bounds. You can, of course, modify that. If I start to take that down, you can see my confidence bounds become closer together. However, if I start to move that up and get above 95%, those lines get further apart. Now, seasonality, I have this set to detect automatically. I don't particularly have seasonality to my data. It's monthly data. That's the only seasonality I really have. But it might be that for certain job roles or for certain figures, there might be an increase in sales at certain times of the year. So you might want to set your seasonality manually. We have our timeline range and our values range. Those are just the selections I've made on my worksheet. I've selected to fill missing points using interpolation. So essentially what that means is if I have any missing values in my data, Excel is going to utilize the data before it and the data after it to create the forecast. Alternatively, you could choose to fill the missing points with zeros. Now, this is a line chart that I'm looking at, but if you look in the top right hand corner, you do also have the option to create a column chart. So again, everything in blue are the current sales and everything in orange is the forecasted data. And you can see we have these little, what I like to call error bars. This is showing you your confidence bounds in the column chart. Now, I actually want mine to be a line chart like so. And I'm going to click on Create. And this is pretty much what it does. It's very quick and it's very simple. So I get my line chart, which is showing me my forecast, but I also get a table, which is showing me the actual figures. So now I have my forecast sales, I have my lower confidence bound sales and my upper confidence bound sales. So essentially with one click, I've been able to create a really nice forecast table and a really nice forecast chart. So if you are someone who does a lot of forecasts or needs to predict future values and you're using Excel 2016 or later, definitely worth checking out that forecast sheet option. That's it for this module. In the next module, I'm going to just show you how to do something similar, but this time using forecast functions in Excel. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this course on Excel for Business Analysts. We're down in section eight and we're talking about forecasting. And in the previous module, I showed you a very quick and extremely useful way of forecasting or predicting future values using forecast sheets. What I want to do in this module is just show you some of the alternatives that you have when it comes to forecasting, mainly focusing on functions that we can use to forecast our data as well. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that the functions I'm going to show you now are quicker or easier than using forecast sheets, but I think it's always good to know what options you have within Excel in case you end up using a version where you don't necessarily have some of the latest functions or the forecast sheets option. You have a backup of other functions that can be used to forecast. So I'm going to start out by showing you the slope and intercept functions in Excel, which can help you forecast or predict future values. What I have on the screen here is just some very simple data, and I've labeled it X and Y just to make this exercise a little bit easier to explain. Now, what we have here are some values for X. And at the moment, they are just regular numbers, one all the way through to 17. And then I have some values for Y. Now, these values aren't sequential. They don't have any particular pattern to how they increase. But what I want to do is I want to predict what these values are going to be for the X values 13 to 17. Now, if it helps you visualize this a bit better in your mind, you could visualize these X values as dates and these Y values as sales figures. Now, when you're doing a forecast or when Excel is doing a forecast, what it's essentially trying to do is it's trying to work out the straightest line it can find through your data in order to predict the next values. So working on the basis that Excel is trying to find a straight line, what we're going to do in this exercise is I'm going to show you what the formula is for a straight line. And we can then use that to predict our values. 
Now this is where everything goes a little bit mathsy, so I, I apologise greatly for taking you back to your school days. But you may or may not remember that the equation for a straight line is y equals mx plus c. So in this equation, we know what our y values are. We've got them listed here. We know what our x values are because we have those listed out as well. We have two unknowns. We have an m value and a c. And this is what we're going to use, the slope and intercept functions, to work out. So if underneath I put in m and then c, and I'm going to type in equals slope and open my bracket. Now this slope function is literally trying to work out the slope of the straight line. And you can see that my arguments here are fairly straightforward. It wants the known y's, so I can just select those. And I'm going to make those absolute because I'm going to drag this down. And then it wants the known x's. I can select those and make those absolute. Close off my bracket, hit enter, and now I have my m value for my equation. I'm going to do the same for c, and we're going to use intercept. An intercept calculates the point at which a line will intersect the y-axis. And again, it's asking for the known y's make those absolute, and the known x's. So these are not complex functions. They're very easy when it comes to arguments. Close my bracket and hit enter. So now I have all of the constituent parts of this equation to complete my forecast. So what we want to do is we want to do m, which is this cell reference, and we're going to lock that in place. We need to multiply it by x, and then we're going to plus C. If you're not like a subscriber, so. click down below to subscribe. And it gives me my predicted so value. Get about I can then double click to copy that down, and I have my forecast in place. In this now I'm not saying that you'll ever do a forecast there, this way, but it's good to understand how forecasting actually works, and that you have these Simon alternative Seven. functions available to you in Excel. Now that we've done that, let's do the same thing, but using the new forecast function in Excel. So we have exactly the same data here, but we're just going to utilize the forecast function. And you'll see that this is a much easier way of doing things. So when I start to type in forecast, you'll see I get a few different options. Now notice that the one at the bottom that is just forecast, mine has a little warning triangle next to it. And that means it's there as a legacy function. It's been replaced by something more current in Excel, but it's still there for legacy purposes. Now forecast has been replaced with forecast linear, and that is the one I'm going to choose here because I'm again looking for the straightest line possible through my data. Now the first argument here is x, so I need to give it my next x value. Now I actually want to select cell C16, but you can see that my formula is kind of over the top of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to escape out of there and I'm going to construct this up in the formula bar instead. So forecast.linear, we want our x value, which is C16, comma, and known y's, I'm going to make those absolute, comma, and our known x's and hit enter, and then we can drag that down. And what I'm probably going to want to do here is just do a little bit of formatting, so up on that home ribbon, and I'm going to take all those decimal places down, like so. Now there are lots of other forecast options, and I would say that if you're somebody who is into forecasting, or you need to do it a lot, it's definitely worth reading up about all of the different options that you have. Something I find particularly helpful is just to search for forecast, and go and get some help on forecast from within Excel. So you can see here, it's gonna show you all of the forecast functions that are available, and you can run through and you can take a look at what each of those does and work out which one's gonna be best for the type of data that you're forecasting. But for the time being, that is it. Hopefully in this section, you've seen a few different options there if you need to predict future values based on historical data and trends. That's it for this module, and that's it for this very short section. In the next section, we're going to be taking a look at additional tools that you're going to find really useful in Excel if you are a business analyst. So please join me for that.
If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get the files the instructor used in this tutorial and follow along, click over there. And click over there to watch more videos on YouTube from Simon Says It.